we start from the start button so I have starts then you can just scroll down it's always arranged in alphabetical order so that is word that I can fill my word 2016 I can do it more better with, without using the mouse without using the mouse what I will do on your keyboard there is this icon on your keyboard is always at the left or the right so if you press it now you can use your arrow button I have the arrow button up and down left and right so you can just move and you move it down down to where you get to w which is the word and when you get to that point then you press enter so at this point microsoft word is going to open then you have your word and you have the recent work you have done then you have the templates okay you have the templates and you have the blank documents so on the black documents i have the windows this is office windows and you have the documents you have the title bar at this place the title bar i have the windows icon all these buttons are windows icon one is minimize taking you down to the test task bar at this point okay one is maximize going to pull the screen and the next one maximize or restore okay if you have restored it it's taking it back to this place and you can click and drag to move your windows this is what i call the windows okay and this is x means close window or you can press ctrl w to close the page or you can press alt f4 to close the window okay i have the menu bar so i have the files by default i have the main home home bar i have inserts i have the design i have layouts reference mini review and the rest now i have what we call the ribbons okay so these are the ribbons so under the ribbons you have the group it is group under home this is the ribbons i have the clipboard i have the font groups i have the paragraph groups i have the style groups okay so now on each of the groups i also have this icon and that icon is called what yeah. launching box so you can click this go to launch a dialog box this 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 or or any of the inserts the design and what have you made anytime you open microsoft word by default it's going to be on the home tab the, i have the rulers i have the horizontal ruler i have the vertical ruler now on the horizontal ruler if you don't have it this is the way you bring it in i have the view so when you click on the view you see this ruler is under the show the ruler is check if it's not check check it i remove is disappear okay another thing that you can still find is the grid lines okay the grid lines just like a guiding this is the navigation plane okay but by default we always have this and that place under under view status bar the status bar is telling you all what you are doing on the status bar I have the page one of one, the word, the insert. Sometimes you may not see the insert. I will tell you how to do so. Then I have the views. Then I have the zoom. So I'm going to tell you on how to do to do that. I'm just telling you the for you to familiar with the windows. All windows look alike. So if you know how to use the windows for Microsoft, any other windows is very simple for you to to use one is the title editing area this is the editing area and this is the cursor 
So when you type, the cursor is always starts from the left to the right. Okay, there is a way we can change it to type from the right down to the left, and there is a way we can change it to start from the middle either to the left or to the right. You get that cursor that is blinking. So if that cursor is not blinking, you cannot type. So this is the cursor, and wherever it is, it means whatever you type, that's where is going to appear. So what whatever you type this is where is going to appear you get it okay so now for me to type now for me to type i'm going to type and for you to be able to see i'm going to put equal to round and bracket open and bracket close then i will press enter and so this is the english faction and this this is the uh, the French fashion and that is I guess that is to be equal to Lorraine brackets open and, and close so I have the this okay so now I can use my arrow key to move around the course of the page so I'm pressing the arrow up and arrow down or I'm using the right arrow or I'm using the left arrow just to move within the test okay now i'm moving i'm moving then i'm moving from left to right then up to down just mouse so i can come here so i can have my scroll down then i can have my scroll up are you spotting are you seeing it so i can click on the on the tabs I can also click on the tabs so it's, this one is done by views or I can also do what click and drag this bar to move it so anyway anyhow you feel like up is going to move by view if I press pick down it's going to move by view okay let me try to have more pages let me try to have more pages Okay, so now I'm using the arrow. Now, if you check it, I have page four of four, and I'm using the arrow up. Now, if I press Control plus the arrow, it's going to jump by by what? By paragraph. Can you see it? Okay, it's going to jump by paragraph. Okay. Don't forget, last time during our theory, I said by the time you press enter, enter just means to start a new paragraph. I can continue to type, will be automatically moved to the next line. But if I want to start a new paragraph, I will just press enter. So now I have the page control plus the arrow. Now if I'm pressing the arrow to the right, you see the way it's moving. It's moving by character by par character. If I hold down the control and i press the arrow what do you notice is jumping by word okay so if i'm using the arrow up it's moving line by lines okay now if i use the control plus the arrow it is going to jump by paragraph so if i press page up or down it's going to move by view now if i hold down the control and i press page down is going to jump by the first the first uh, view of a page okay if i press page down is moving to the first view of page one of page one if i press down again it's moving to the next view of another page so this is where my cursor is my cursor is at the beginning of the test so by the time i press end it's going to move end on the keyboard is going to move to the to the end can you see it's going to be the end of the of the same of the same line the cursor is on the first line of the first page and if i press control end it's taking this to the end of my page if i press control o it's taking taking this to the beginning of the test if i press control n it's taking this to the the end of the page how to save 
Now, if you check on the, your title bar, you see document one, place that I have not saved. So, if the lights go off now, all that time is going to disappear. Although, computer always automatically want to save, you click on the file button. So, when you click on the file button, it's going to bring out this. Then you click on save as. On the save as, then you have the save as. Then you have the directory. The directory is where you want to save. Then I have, I have the recent directory that I've used. Okay, you can just pick directly. If you check this, you see my directory from this place. The directory is like from C. C is hard drive. I have the users, if the user is the name, I have the webmaster, I have the Google Drive. So that means that I do save on my on my Google Drive. So that is the, the kind of the directory. So now the same example, I can just click on place to on this PC, OneDrive or on browse. So once I click on browse, so it's going to bring out the dialog box. So now I have the dialog box. So I have the directory where I want to put it. So for example, on the desktop, I'm going to click on the desktop. And I have this, I have the file name, I have the format at which I'm saving. Okay, so now on the desktop, I want to create a folder. It's very simple on how to create a folder. You just right click on the white background. When you right click, it's going to bring out the all this that what do I want to do say I want a new so on the new so it bringing out the folder so I have the folder this is the folder I want to save so automatically is putting it as the name so I can just put practice or practice like that I click on it so I can right click again I choose open or I can double click so the folder is empty now check the directory the directory is from my pc down to the desktop down that means on the desktop i'm going to see a folder called frats so now i'm going to give my file a name practically you are having open a file you have to put it in name and your name must be any letter both capital letter or small letter and uh, it must not contain special characters like full stop or any other question mark and any other thing so what i'm going to put here is going to be a simple test that if i'm coming back to this system in the next three four years i will still remember the name so i can just say 2019 sets pratics prat one so that means that just what i've just used so now i have the same as the formats you can save as different formats don't forget i said microsoft word is saved by dot docl okay this is a sample of dot docl i can change the format i can change this to internet file i can change this to play this is internet file this is the ordinary and this is pdf conversion which is very important that most of you don't know I convert your word to PDF, convert it to front or to internet uh, web pages. I can create a website. Or what I just need, design my website on the Microsoft Word. And by the time I want to launch it, I will now save the, the page as web page. So once I've done it, it's automatically a website page. So once I choose the practice, then I do that, I do that, then the next thing is for me to click on save so once i click on save so it's going to change this and change this to practice tools that i have saved of saving it just by pressing f12 if you press f12 on the keyboard it's going to bring out the dialog box like for example now if i press escape it's going to close it this is dialog box it's dialog box because it only have x Okay. All dialog box have only S or question mark. The windows has minimize, maximize, and close. If I have only one button that have only close, that is dialog box. Now, if I have a pop up that doesn't contain anything, that is menu. 
for example, if I click on this place, it doesn't have any X, so that is menu. So I can only close this either by clicking on the outside or by pressing Escape. Now, if I press F12, I have the same dialog box. So that means that when you have saved, you can save again, again by pressing your words F12. When you press F12, bringing out this, you press Escape, it's closing it. Now I can also do the same thing using my keyboard, keyboard alone, without not using the mouse. How do we do that? It's very simple. You just press your Alt on the keyboard. By press Alt on the keyboard, it's going to label it. Now I'm going to file, and if you check my file, is capital is capital F. Am I right? You press F on your keyboard, it's going to open another thing. It's going to label it, and I'm going to save as. And if you check the save as. Is labeled with A. I'm going to press A. So it's going to another thing. So where am I going? I'm going to browse. So I just press O. So if I press O, it's going to bring this. See that I've come to where I'm going. So if I want to jump between this side and this side and this side and this side to this place. Now if you check this place, it is label X. The S is what? Is uh, is underlined. So that means that if I press S, it's going to save. Now, if I want to jump from S to cancel, I will only press Tab. If I press Tab, so it's going to jump. Okay, it's going to jump. It's jumping to the tools, it's jumping to the save, and it's jumping to the cancel. So if it just hit Enter, so it's going to cancel it. And if I press Escape, it's going to close that. So you save as you type. You save as you type. Now this is what I've typed, but it's not with those I've typed before. So if the lights go up, all what I type right now is not going to be it's not going to be there any longer. So now just for me to keep updating, so we said update your files. So what I will do is always I will come to the file. I will instead of save us, I will just click on save. Long time or all I I can use what I can use the use the icon on the quick bar quick bar have not told you this is quick bar or quick launch without quick bar or quick launch okay so i have the, this symbol for this case so once i press it so it's going to save okay i can also i can also use the shortcuts on the keyboard and that is by by pressing ctrl x so once i press ctrl s if you check this menu immediately i want to press ctrl s something is going to run can you see that is loading telling me that it has saved how to open new document or how to open the existing documents let's close this or well, before we close if I want to open the document, why the Microsoft window is open, I will just come to the file, then I will choose name, then I have the blank or the templates, so I can just choose the blank, so I will have the document number 2, or I simply press control, control what, control N for new sheets, check it, I have the document number 3, okay? That is how to open new new documents. Okay, let's close it. Remember the way we saved the last time? Closing everything, or you press what? Alt F4. You press Alt F4 is going to close. I save it on what? On desktop. And I created a folder. Wow. I created a folder and they called the folder crack. So I'm going to open my file explorer. Okay. This is the desktop. I come on to the desktop. Okay, this is it. I can double click on it or I right click and choose open. I told you that the right click is for you to see the options that you want to do. Then I will choose open. So once I right click, I see the open. I can just click here and I double click. It's going to open it. Okay, so instead of coming to this place, I will start from, the, from this PC. That is from local disk. Okay, from local disk. Then to so once I do that, I will choose the users 
Then I will choose the webmaster. So can you see the, this is what we call the directory. Okay. And this local PC, PC to local disk, which is C. Your CD, CD drive is always D. Your flash or any other gadget that you plug to your your computer is going to be E, F, G, H and the rest like that. Just come to the users, webmaster, in the webmaster I'm going to find the desktop, this is desktop, webmaster, desktop and the practice and this like that. Oh, if I don't want to waste time, at this point I can just search, I can just search, I just see word. Okay, the word is very very simple. Then I have Word A, Word 2016. Then I can just click on this very. If you notice, it's open faster. Am I right? So I can just click on the. These are the recent, recent documents I've done. I just click on it. So it's open. It's how to insert and add text. If you check this, you see by default it's insert. Okay. Now I've told you that anywhere your text. Anywhere your cursor is, your server you put, that's where it's going to appear. My cursor is at the beginning of the test. So, I want to type here. So, what do you notice? It's pushing the rest. So, if I click here like this place, I made a mistake. I just click inside. Okay. I can just correct. Add the test to it. At this place, where the cursor is and whatsoever you type that's where it's going to appear so now let's assume that i don't want to push i have the inserts now if the insert is not on your system this is how the way you will do it you right click at this point when you right click it's going to bring out this this and you see the over type and the over type and the inserts must be marked if it's not marked it's going to disappear now if it's marked the insert is going to be there. So once the insert is there, I'm going to click on it. I have the over type. It has been changed to over type now. So whatsoever I type, it's not going to push away. When I type here, yeah, it's going to over type. It's deleting the previous one and write over it. So that is over type. The next thing is how do we select how do we highlight or select and what is the purpose now let's see how to select first how to highlight now i'm using mouse let's see how to use the mouse you click from the first point from the left then you click and drag to the right or you start from the right then you click and drag to the left or you cannot start at the middle and you want to select this side is not going to it's not going to force you so now that is select then the next one is selecting a single word so if i double click on a single word it's going to select it now if i triple click on the paragraph it's going to select the whole paragraph so how do you triple click? You just say one, two, three. Then another way around is by holding down the alt key and then press your mouse button and drag over it. I hold down the control key and I click anywhere. So it's going to select it. It's going to select it. Okay. Hold down the control and click anywhere of the centers. It's going to select it. Now if I hold down the alt. And I click and drag, it's going to select the columns. So if we hold down the, this, and can you see it? It's going to select E column. When you press Ctrl A, it's going to select all. Press Shift, and you can use any of the arrow. Shift and any of the arrow. Arrow to the right is selecting it character by character if i hold down the control and the shift is going to select by word either to the right or the left if i press the shift and the arrow down it's going to select by line if i press the control it's going to select by paragraph if you press f8 on your keyboard before you press f8 you have to put your cursor to where you want to select then you press f8 on your keyboard so now the next thing is you now use your arrow key 
without not pressing anything, it's going to select. And if you want to stop that, then you just press the escape button. If you press the escape button, so it's going to stop. If you want to select using the keyboard, to select a colon using the keyboard, you just press Ctrl Shift and F8. You press this together, then after you press this together, then you now use any of the arrows key to any of the arrows keys to select the color of the test. Now, how do we delete? Using the backspace and the delete button. Now, depending on where your cursor is, let's say for example, your cursor is on the on this smart art. Your cursor is on this smart art. You want to delete the picture chart and what are we just press? Just press backspace. It's going to delete from right to the left. Okay. Remember that when you are typing, you are typing from the left to the right. When you are deleting, this backspace to delete from right to the left. Now the same word, I can use my bank delete button to delete the smart art. It's going to delete to the right. Okay. So it's not good English for me to say backspace the test. So the way I will say it also delete the test. It's not depend on you which one will you use. Are you going to use the delete button or backspace button? So now if I press Ctrl A and I press delete, it's going to delete all. It's going to delete all. And if you made a mistake in deleting, so what will you do? On your quick launch, you can see undo or redo. If you press it, it's going to undo all what you have typed. Okay, if you press it again, it's going to undo it. If you click on this more button, it's going to show you how many things you have done. Okay. So another way, if you don't undo, if you don't undo, you can just press Ctrl Z. Ctrl Z is going to take you a step backward. Y Ctrl Y is going to take you a step forward. Now, after you have known that, the next thing is how do you cut, copy, paste. Now let's start with the copy. First thing is use any of your method you need to select or to highlight. So it's very good to, to know how to use your mouse. The mouse is more faster than any other thing. Just click and drag. Or you can use your, your, your so after that you right click somewhere on the selected you select then you right click on somewhere on the selected then you can now see the copy and once you see the copy is already copied so you assume that it has copy then you take it to where you want to paste it you right click on it then you now choose paste just click on the paste. I just click on the paste options. You can click on the paste option on this icon. Just click on any one. Okay. Just click. So it's going to paste it. Okay. So once you paste, it's going to show you this icon of paste. Don't mind this. Don't don't just worry about it. Or you can just come to this place. This is the copy. Okay. At the time you select. Then you are going to see this one active. But if you don't select, it's not going to be active. So you can copy, okay, or you can just press Ctrl C for copy. And when you copy, the next thing is to paste. This is the symbol for pasting. And you press Ctrl V to paste. You can continue pasting. You can continue that you can use to cut and paste. The same way you just you select one you want to cut. You select, then you right click on it, then you can now choose cuts or you press your control X, control X cuts, and you can also press or you come to this front button. You see the scissors, the scissors is also for you to cut. So when you cut, it's like you are moving it. When you cut, it's like you are moving it. Then you cut it from that place. Then where you want to paste it, then you can just do what? You can just do paste, Ctrl V to paste. You can continue pasting. Or another way of cutting, another way of cutting is by you selecting. You select what you want to cut. 
then you now click and drag when you click and drag you see a box attached to that saying that i have got it from that place now i want to put it at this point so i cut it from somewhere else and place it to another here so the same way i can cut from one window to another window how do i do that so now let me restore this to this and let me create another new window by pressing ctrl n so this is new window now let me let me move this window out from that place so now i have two windows i have two windows and i'm filling the two windows two windows at the same time this is one is empty and this is another one so the first thing is i want to move this test here okay so i will press ctrl s i will cut it then i will click here i will press ctrl v to paste it so another way around i will just select it okay what i want to move i can also use click and drag i will click then i will drag it here directly so it's going to be there or alternative i can just select okay i will click and drag to the taskbar while on the taskbar i'm not going to remove my hand so the two windows is going to open then i will say oh this is the window i want to move it so once i move it, it's going to automatically open that window then i can now paste it there to move this window as something i did not do i can resize the window if your window is too big you can come to this side you can resize you can come from the right from the bottom and from the horizontal you can resize okay and you can resize diagonally so once you click like this you can resize and on the title bar you can click and drag to move it so you can do the same thing at this point you resize it the way you want and you can click and drag and move it from where you want so why you can select this and you can just hold down the uh, hold down the control while you under the control and you drop so instead of cuts and paste it's going to copy okay that's the another way of copy you just press down the control and hold down your your mouse and drag it it's going to copy it then you are looking for a particular test you are looking for a particular test so let's say i'm looking for this d anywhere i use d i want to replace it or if i just press ctrl f if i press ctrl f it's going to bring out the dialog box so it's going to select all where d is have you seen it it's going to select all where d is so that means that i have 19 d's okay i have the 19 d's now if i want to change this to that or i can just click on the i can just click on the view and i have the editing i have the editing i have the find i have the find from the editing so from the menu from the menu i have the editing i have the editing replace so now instead of that i'm going to press ctrl what ctrl what to find and replace who knows it i'm going to press ctrl ctrl h so if i if i press ctrl h it's going to i'm going to find and replace or ctrl g is going to take me to go to so this is the word i'm looking for so anytime you find that just re replace it with question mark there i can say replace if you choose replace it's going to replace it one after the other but if you choose replace all so it's going to automatically replace okay so everything all i've done 19 replaced so so that is replace all is how to increase font size so this is your font now the first thing is you have to select your test you select you or you highlight the test you want to increase then you have the font size font size here okay you have the font here i have the font size so now if you click here so you can see by default it's going to change the font size 
So if you move your mouse over, it's going to change the font size. Have you seen it? It's going to change the font size. Okay, because by default with this, you have the Calibri body. So that is the font. This is the fonts. You have the different fonts and they are arranged in alphabetical orders. These are the recent fonts and the rest are arranged in alphabetical orders. And you can see it from the preview. It's showing it. It's showing it to you. Okay. And I can increase the font size. I can increase the font size. I can also change the fonts by pressing Ctrl Control D. I press Ctrl D, it's going to bring out the font dialog box. Okay, the font dialog box. I have the font, I have the font size at this place. Or I can also press Ctrl, Ctrl Shift F. Ctrl Shift F also bring out my the same Z dialog box. The same font dialog box. Okay, so don't forget the first thing you have to highlight, you have to select, and you can have this. Now, if I want to increase the font size, I can just press Ctrl and Shift greater than on the keyboard. I'm going to press it, Ctrl Shift greater than on the keyboard or Ctrl Shift less than on the keyboard. Or, or I can just press Ctrl and the coil bracket. Okay? And close brackets and Ctrl and the off brackets so as i'm doing that if you check this place so it's going to see that is the font size is is increasing and the font size is decreasing you have the a a a i'm increasing the font size and this place i'm decreasing the font size okay now let's i want to do to increase the font size then i can increase the font size i can increase the font size you see i can also decrease the font size from this place okay how to bold the test just click here bold the test now bold the test how do you bold the test you have the bold here first thing first you have to select your test you select your test then you come to the b the bold b i u okay so you now click on the board click on the board it's going to board it it's going to board it if you click on the eye it's going to italic put it on the italic just like a slant if you click on you it's going to underline so the same way using the shortcut you are using the shortcut i'm going to press ctrl b for board board ctrl i for italic ctrl u for underline now under the underline I have different types of underline, thick underline, double underline, thick underline, dash underline, okay, or I can press Ctrl Shift, Ctrl Shift D for double underline, Ctrl Shift D for double underline, Ctrl Shift W for underline by word, underline by word, underline by word, like for example, like if I underline by word and I put my cursor, any other thing, any other thing that I that I type, I type is going to be is going to be be on the same format. So it's going to be on the same format. So if I want to stop that, if I don't want to be on the same format click here then i will click clear the format so once i click on clear the format so is going is going to be on on the defaults it's going to be on the defaults you can also do it from font dialog box okay Font dialog box, or you press Ctrl D, or you press Ctrl Shift F. So it's going to bring out the dialog box. So I have my font at this point. I have my font size, font type, bold, italics. I have the font size at this place. Even I have the font color. I have the font color. I have the underline type. Then you can press OK. Don't forget, you have to select first. So you don't align. 
this will not work so i have my font style they are different style now you see different styles and you can put outline you can put shadow you can put reflection you can put glow anyone so you have to apply this first so when you apply this you can now apply your effects okay so the same thing the same thing this is font color okay so you can choose the color that you want how do we work with strike through so now let's just type strike strike through so now i have the strike through so you select it then on this touch on this uh, menu bar on bar under ribbon under the font group i have this apc green crawl so once i click on it it's going to cancel it just like this cancel or i can also do it from the font dialog box once i open the font dialog box then i have this right through mark it okay like for example now i want to type in naira just put capital n start a single or select it i can come to the font dialog box then i can choose double strike through okay so i have the double strike through and i have the naira sign those of all that are familiar with something like what we have the like the al plus al al 3 plus okay h capital h2 capital o and the rest like that if i want to superscript and subscribe and uh subscript if i want to superscript i will select this i will select the 3d and i come to this x raised to power 3 or i can type this so i can press ctrl shift plus ctrl shift plus is going to be superscripts okay okay i can also do the same thing for two i will select the two and i will choose this or i press the i press what i have control was equal to control equal to so it's going to subscript it so for example it happens whenever you are typing the dates i just say two second okay december 2019 now if i put like that is this one is changing this to position and it's not dates so you can just come back to this you select it and you remove the superscript so it's taking it down okay it's making you like that but if you write your dates like that that's the position and this one is the normal date it from the dialog box I do it from the dialog box i have superscript i have subscript i have this yeah. you can change from small letter to capital letter so don't don't bother yourself you are type this and say ah it's in a day and it's supposed to it's supposed to be a capital letter or you just need to select it and come to change case i have change case lower case sentence case upper case capitalize each word capitalize each word you can just pick it randomly top case or you can just change this to center case or changes to lower case or changes to upper case and there is a way you can do it on your keyboard you just press shift f3 you press shift f3 shift f3 continue pressing the shift f3 is changing it from from different cases so now if i click on this this color okay i have this color i have this color so once i click on this then i can now i can select which one i want to color then i click on this one so it's going to change it if i don't select i can just click on it so i have this brush so i can brush over what i want to select to get it highlights i have this highlight so i can highlight this place and if you want to remove it you choose no color and you can highlight it back or you select it and you come back to the color to, uh, to remove your 
highlights and we can apply the effects these are the effects you select then you come to this you just change it okay. change okay. can you see it and you can change can you add shadow you can add so many other things to it you just press ctrl n i have the new sheets let's assume that i want to type a i want to type a letter i want to type a letter and i have the the address the address the address let me see the address let me just copy it at least the address will be four and let's have the dates let's have the dates and that is today's date is okay then i have uh, what next to 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 what to the principal Okay, to the principal then I have the address am I right I have the address I hope you are understand I hope you understand that then I have the 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 title the title of my letter okay Okay, sorry, I have to, I supposed to have the answer. Where should you have? Okay, I have the answer. The answer. Oma. Okay, I have the address. Then I have my content of my letter. Let's put my content of the letter to be. And that is my content is going to be equal to range bracket open. I have, let me put how many paragraphs do I want? Then how many lines do I want? Okay, so I can close it. So I have three paragraph, uh, three paragraphs. I have three paragraphs and four lines. I have three paragraphs. I have the you get it the way how many paragraphs there are many lines okay this is what i press okay and this is what i'm expecting you to run run then how many lines how many paragraph paragraph then comma then how many lines for each paragraph then close okay or you may not bother to put anything so you just assume default will come up so the default will come up then yours sincerely testing okay so now i have this you can select this okay and you have sent center adjustment adjustment test adjustment i have this okay i have this i have this this is center this is left this is center okay this is center and this is right and uh, this is justified or simply you can just press your control r for right control control r for right align control l for left align Control E for center. Control E for center. Or you can do it from the paragraph. Click on the paragraph. This is center, left, right, justify. Taking it back to the left. Click OK. And uh, if I use right, I can use my tab. Okay. If I press tab, if I press tab, it's going to move it. If it's more than that, you can use your shift tab, so it's going to return it. Okay. Now on this place, I have 
on the ruler I have the bars. The first one is first line index, the second one is hanging and I have the left index. What I'm doing is index. So I can just move the index. Let me zoom so that you can see it clearly. Okay, I can have the index. So it's on the five of the ruler. Okay, I suppose to move this also. I can just move this. I'm pressing the tab to move. So the same two. Now in between, I want to space this. So I cannot use this. It won't work. I can use this. It will be moving everything together. So I can actually press my tab. Okay. To move it. You get it. So the same thing, the address. I want the address to stay at that point. So I can just tab it. Okay. I can just put this and this one. I can control both, control shift greater than to increase the font size, then control E to center it. Now you see that all this one they are not what they are not taxing. Now you look at this plane that's gap between this and this. I can select these two first. Okay, I can justify they all end at the same at the same points but this gap are too much i can just come to this and say remove the space okay alternative i can just select all i can just select from this place down to this place down to this place and i can just put my ctrl j for justify ctrl j for justify and I want to put space between this place so I can just come to this paragraph and say spacing line spacing 1.1 1 .1 or double space so it's going to double space have you seen it? or I can just do it from here right away or I can just press my shortcut Control 1 for single space Control 2 for double space Control 5 1.5 spacing let's leave it control 2 for double space okay i can just come to this paragraph i say all my first line here i want it to be to be paragraph by one you see it like this okay now for those of you that you want to do your projects okay and you want to do your what uh what we call it your reference so now instead of first line i'm going to choose your angle okay so now your first line is going to be what you just count the number of lines they want you to do okay and you press ok now can you see from here i can also do it from the ruler i can move it back okay and i can do something like this can you see it so depending on the way you want okay i can also just use my tab alone just press tab on each of the paragraph. Just press tab. Okay, it's only the paragraph and it's only the paragraph. Now if you want to do the hand game, so you click on this hand, then you just click and press it. Now you see, then you come to this place, then you continue your hand game, put it at the end of the bar, and last thing for today's class, and that is spacing before and spacing after so now once i select it i can just come here i choose add space before and i can just choose add space before or add space after or i can just do it from the paragraph straight away from the paragraph okay i choose i choose i choose space before to be 12 18 or 24 or space before and space after okay i just click ok so i have the space before okay so i think this is the best way for me to end today's class